This was definitely what you call an unstable day. Not a day for passengers. Oh, wow, that was a pretty good cheer right there. Aspiring to fly warbirds, I need to hone my tailwheel skills on tough days. Oh, shit, I thought I was going to get away with not scaring myself on this flight. And now I got shaky feet. You're not slightly scared, you're not learning. I'm getting back on the horse, man. Tailwheel flying has been awesome, and I was lucky to get to fly the Stearman early in my training. But before we can really explore warbird flying, I need to earn my tailwheel stripes in the Super Cup. After my first tailwheel lesson, Dennis offered some great insight regarding our biggest fear of flying tail draggers, the dreaded ground loop. I think the takeaway is that, that tailwheel flying just makes sure that everything that you know about flying is implemented. There's no forgiveness, especially on pavement, if you land slightly yawed and you don't correct for it right away, the wheels will bite the asphalt, the airplane will start to swerve, the centrifugal force of the swerve will overcome the ability to get it back and you will go beyond the envelope of where you can actually recover. Controlling a tailwheel airplane on the ground is challenging because the center of gravity is behind the main gear, unlike a nose wheel or a tricycle gear airplane. And with bigger airplanes like Stearman's, once you've hit the point of no return, there's usually no way out other than intentionally ground looping, trying to avoid the heaviest thing <laughs> in your way. Yeah. And here's some actual footage of a Stearman ground looping. It was kindly shared to add to this video. A common theme in most ground loops is that they happen late in the roll, which is why you cannot stop flying these airplanes until you're parked. And just wait for the dust to settle, and hopefully nothing got damaged too badly. One of the things that people like about this, especially pilots that fly other airplanes, is that when they master a tailwheel airplane, they find that all their other flying improves. Having gained some tailwheel experience since then, I couldn't agree more. Our school requires 20 hours of tailwheel experience before you can take a passenger. So on my 20th hour, I was excited to take my buddy Maron for a ride. Do you want to try taxiing it? Okay. You just hold the stick back. Yep. And you have it. Yep, I got it. I've seen a bite people before. I had one guy, he was getting his landings down really nice and we were taxiing along and, and I was starting to relax. Like I'm getting out my flight sheets to write down the landing time and all of a sudden we just went, you know, like right around. And we come to a stop in a cloud of dust and he says, he says, what happened there? I said, I don't know, I wasn't watching. I said, what'd you do? And he says, well, I was looking over at the gas pumps thinking which taxiway I was gonna turn off. And I said, well, there's your mistake because you stopped flying the airplane. With that in mind, as a private pilot, you can let passengers try the controls when it is safe to do so. But having no tailwheel experience, I wasn't setting Marin up for success by letting him try taxiing so soon. Notice the ditch on the right side of the taxiway. But yeah, the way, the way you do it in the Warbirds or whatever, or the Stearman or anything else, is you zigzag. And from back there, you can actually see quite well as soon as you start to turn, right? Yeah. Because you're way behind the fulcrum of the... Right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay, whoa. How did you do that? What I don't know! Okay. <laughs> All right, let me, let me try to redeem myself. Okay, you got it? Yeah. It's okay, we didn't hit a light or anything. No. Okay, so I had a hard time getting on the brakes fast enough when that happened. So that is what happens with these things when you try to land to take off. See how fast that happens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden you're oscillating, right? Yeah, you're doing it again. Don't overcorrect it. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, yeah. <laughs> I got my blood pumping. Upon review, I realized just how close we had come to having a really expensive day. Because going off on the right side there would not have been good. Oh, he saw that. That wasn't me, uh, honestly. <laughs> was he saying something to you? Well, I see in your next video. Oh, I'm not going to be sharing that one. I was just letting my buddy try taxiing, and that's what happens as soon as you let somebody who doesn't know how to rock a tail dragger. Anyway, do you want to get by me there? Uh, affirmative, thanks. Okay, go ahead. That was wild. So tailwheel flying basically teaches you to get reacquainted with the rudder pedals. You can't be shy. Positive rudder control requires punching and jabbing with confidence. I documented my entire tailwheel training experience rather thoroughly. This footage is from my first wheel landing lesson on pavement, which is challenging even in calm wind. Now that we know what I'm up against, let's go test my abilities to land in a strong, gusty crosswind and flirt with the dreaded ground loop. I took this screen grab of the radar from home while I was getting my weather briefing. The airport's located here. The radar overlay in ForeFlight has nice track vectors that show a 20, 40, and 60 minute trend. I got a weather briefing over the phone which confirmed that although not pretty, there was going to be a flyable window when this gap between the storms arrived over the field. I actually drove through the first storm on the way to the airport, and all went as planned. 
sort of. The flaps are up. Rich, cold, locked, both on, feels where I want it. Straighten out, crosswinds from the left, quite strong. Here we go. The best shot of the windsock that I could find was from after rotation, so I slow mode this one, but you can see it's a solid 15 knots. So I let that left wing dip because I really wanted to protect myself from that crosswind. Did not want my left wing coming up, getting kicked across the other side of the runway by the wind. I rather overcorrect for a crosswind, I think, than undercorrect. Not a day for pastors. While climbing out into the sheer and turbulence, I distinctly remember thinking I may have just flown in over my head. What have I done? But with that in mind, I was also really on my game and I felt like I was in the zone, so I intentionally wanted to face these types of conditions to challenge myself when I knew I was ready for it. I'm keeping my climb speed a little fast just because I feel vulnerable with all these gusts and bumps and turbulence. I don't want to find myself slow and low. Yeah, this is definitely a workout. I'm building traffic box. The Oscar is turning right downwind, runway 27 for a full stop. Ugh, my should be just going for 14. It's almost at that point. Yeah, that's a solid 15 knot. Almost direct crosswind for 27. Anyway, that's what we're here for, practice, so let's stick with the plan. If I hate it, I will overshoot. Be a little special. Dennis told me I had the skill set to handle this. So, better not let him down. This is how you get better. Find your limit, and then test it. Try to do it without breaking anything. That's the key. If you're not slightly scared, you're not learning. Test it, because it is humid. Car beats cold. Timer's locked. Bags are on both. Master is on. Fuel quantity still good. I'm feeding off of the right tank. Okay. One notch. And Burlington Traffic Fox Q Oscar is turning right base from a 27 for a full stop Burlington. Wow, I can really feel that I'm flying into a headwind on base here. My ground speed just went down at nothing. All right, a wheelie on a gusty, shitty crosswindy day. This is what it's about. This is why you need the skill. Okay, loosen up. Check the trim. And Burlington like Traffic, Park Ski Oscars, final, runway 27 for a full stop, Burlington. Okay, fly the crab. I'm trying to fly a crab all the way down on final, transitioning into a slip at the last second, landing on my upwind wheel first, followed by the downwind wheel. The longer between the tire chirps, the better. Remember your lesson, young Jedi. Fly the crab right into the transition. Speed is good. Still crabbing. Okay. All right, let's tuck it down. Keep that into wind wing down. Don't get that into wind wing up, man. Stuff it. I'm okay with that, but keep the tail up, stuffed into the corner, way forward. Not down yet. Alright, so now the tail's down. Pops up. Alright, felt pretty good about that. It was a little squirrely while I was transitioning from the tail being up, but I suppose that's to be expected because that's when you're slow and kind of vulnerable and it's definitely gusty. Now I'm a little bit slow. Holy shit. Alright, let's just not get too slow with gusts like that. This is fly stable, buddy. Okay, 70. Don't stretch the glide. Speed is good. Let's hold 70. Alright, hold the crab. Alright, let's tuck it, tuck it, tuck it. Tuck it, stuff it. The art of wheel landing is maintaining the energy to fly it on, but not have too much energy and bounce, or ricochet. But you have to hold the tail off until it comes down on its own. Alright, tail is down. Get onto the brakes. Time does not fly when you're flying this thing. 
I have 0.6 logged so far. It is a workout, man. Okay, loosen up, loose on the feet. One notch of flaps is out. Feet is good, trim feels perfect. Yep. Alright. And Burlington traffic, Fox Q Oscar is turning final. Let me 27 for a full stop, but I like it. Watch your speed. Being a little bit slow. Now no, it's fast. It's just gusty. Oh, there's a big bump. Okay, transition. Shit. Yeah, that was cool. I had to really be on that rudder. I didn't. That was not beautiful, but I did it. Okay, tail is down. Get on the brakes. But yeah, I want to do a better job in the transition from the crab to the slip. Do not want my into wind wing to come up at all. And Burlington traffic, Fox Q Oscars down and clear 2709, about to taxi across 1432, Burlington. Okay. That last point one took a long time to log, man. Feeling exhausted already and only logged 0.7. And I'm sweating, man. This is a hot, crazy, stormy day. And Burlington traffic, Fox Q Oscars final, only 27, full stop, Burlington. What you're about to see, and more importantly hear, is a legitimate reaction to me scaring the crap out of myself. So please cover your children's ears. You can't feel the g-forces I was feeling when I start getting side load, but you do hear the tires squeal. And I completely panicked for a second, but luckily I snapped out of it and fixed it. So here we go. Yeah, this is just not cool. Look at that drift, eh? Get back on the center line, buddy. You're not allowed for a side load, no drift. Okay, that's some power. Tuck that wing down. Tuck it. Fuck me, fuck me, fuck me, I just scared myself. <laughs> yeah! Woo! Oh yeah! Scared myself. What did I do wrong, man? Alright, so let's review that. It was not the best approach. A little unstable. I probably had some side low when I touched down. I kept my crosswind controls in there for most of the roll, but when things started going badly, I immediately relaxed the crosswind inputs, and if I didn't put them back, I don't know if I would have been able to save it. Now, of course, from the view, I'm skidding to the right in an uncommanded left turn toward that big pile of dirt. I felt totally out of control. It was the worst feeling. So I just tried to fly away from it, which I think is why I pulled back and threw in all that right aileron. But of course, that didn't do anything, so I snapped out of it and got it back, but I was close to the point of no return. Oh, wow, there was a moment there where I just felt out of control. But I did not lock up my feet, and I think that's what saved me. But I definitely wasn't doing the right thing with the stick. I knew it, too. I knew it. I was right around the point where I think my tail was getting ready to come down. It was slow. It was vulnerable. A gust hit me. Okay, feet are no longer shaking. That's good. I'm getting back on the horse, man. Loosen up. I hate ending on a bad note, so I went and did one more. Ugh. All right. You are not going to beat me today, wind gods. You're not going to beat me. No, that's right. You can try. You can try. Like, what was I thinking, man? I should have just left my stick where it was and used rudder. I knew that. It's just so hard to fight that instinct, man. So hard. But that was the worst thing to do because then I basically was vulnerable for my into wind wing to come up because I did not have air on into the wind. Don't do that. Once you're down, stuff the stick. It's only rudder once your wheels are on the ground, all right? All right, and Fox Kill Oscar is turning final for runway 27, Burlington. Okay, pretty solid gustiness from the left. Turkey Vulture, all right. What the hell, man? I'm fast again. How did that happen? I thought it was good. Ah, eh, shit. Now I have to slip it. And I'll get to fly a nice crab. Brandon Unicom, this is uh, Fox 5 Victor Papa Victor. Looking for an airport advisor. It's ugly. It's pretty gusty. I'm using 2.7. It's quite a crosswind on 2.7. Alright, copy that. Um, and uh, Burlington traffic Victor Papa Victor is one mile east of Carlisle. 2,300. We're inbound for landing one way 2.7. 
Okay, stop it. Make it beautiful, make it beautiful. Keep that stick where it is, just do not move that stick. Do not move that stick. Okay, tails down. On the brakes. Better. That's what I'm talking about. And maybe we should call it quits. So thanks for watching. We've got some really amazing content coming thanks to the community involvement and the support from sponsors and the crowdfunding campaign. Last month, we ran a contest and it went well. So with help from our sponsors, we're going to continue to do so. Please click below to visit flightchops.com to find out who won last month and what's coming next. And as always, keep your flight chops sharp. Oh. Yeah, there's always some good turbos right here, eh? Man, that one almost threw my neck out.